Welcome back everyone to my second YouTube video. It's me, Minna. And um, yeah, this one is going to be a little Q&A video. I figured that would be a good good subject for uh, like the early days of my channel. And um, first, before we start, the footage in the background is recording from one of my live streams actually it's going to be two live streams like stitched together i wasn't able to finish this one in one sitting uh, it's from a couple months ago and uh, yeah i think the total time for this piece was like 15 hours or so 12 of them on stream and then like a couple of hours for sketching and uh, like adjusting little things between streams um, and um, yes yeah, since it's from a stream don't uh, be surprised when uh, weird texts and uh, random stuff <laughs> is drawn every now and then on the on the canvas um, of course always talking with people when I'm streaming and uh, randomly drawing weird things every now and then. <laughs> Ignore those when they pop up. They will uh, obviously go by very fast. But I was looking like uh, through the footage as I was uh, just checking that everything was okay. And uh, I was a little bit weirded out by some <laughs> strange writings and the images that would like flash by like a fraction of a second and then I realized what the, what it was I was like what are these strange artifacts popping up in my drawing every now and then but yeah that's what the, those are <laughs> and also when I'm taking like weird um, pauses in drawing I'm probably just talking to people but yeah let's um get into the questions. I took them from Instagram, from the comments. So thank you everyone who submitted the question. Um, I think I will be able to get through all of them in this video. Instead of splitting them up into two, might as well make this one into a little longer one. So first question was asked a few times and it's like, what drawing program do I use and why? And then um, the one that you see right now is Clip Studio. And it's what I use like 90% of the time to draw nowadays. I used to use Photoshop like years ago. And that was like the only drawing program I used. But then I found Clip Studio and I love, uh, or for me at least, like the inking brushing, inking brushing, <laughs> inking brushes are especially like so responsive to me and they feel just right. While in Photoshop, I always felt like it was good for painting, but I hated doing line art with it. And I started doing all of my line art in Clip Studio. And um, eventually I started also doing like most of my coloring and um, yeah nowadays the only thing i do in photoshop is like every now and then or maybe for like half of my drawings i will do like a painterly color sketch just because i like some of the rough brushes in photoshop better than in clip studio but uh, obviously this drawing i started in clip studio without going through photoshop first but yeah photoshop is Nice for painting rough looking paintings with the uh, different brushes. There's way more different kinds of brushes, I feel like, that you can get for free online. While in Clip Studio, it's like all the brushes kind of feel similar. They're very soft. Even like the ones that are made to be not soft, they still kind of feel like... Uh, mm. <laughs> But Photoshop has like a crazy, you know, dry and wet media brushes that uh, emulate different kind of uh, 
painting styles. But yeah, Clip Studio is my favorite. Photoshop every now and then for little things. Oh, and Photoshop is also... It has so much more like color correction features. So if I'm like... I want to adjust the colors just a little bit after I'm fin finished with the drawing, I will do it in Photoshop. That's kind of like Photoshop's uh, like main point. It's a photo editing program, obviously. It's not even primarily made for painting, as the name tells. But yeah, that's that question. The next one is, what's it like to be a full-time comic artist? Um, it is great <laughs> for me it's um it's my dream job like i really can't think of a better one and like i was going to be drawing comics my plan originally was like i'm just gonna be drawing comics as much as i can in my free time and i'll just be working like a regular boring whatever job and then when it turned out I was able to do this instead as my job, it's like heaven. <laughs> um, and what's it like? It's like I work from home, uh, very long hours. I basically sit by my computer and my tablet and draw for like 10 plus hours, basically almost. And take like, a, you know, a week break every couple of months because I don't take weekends off. <laughs> I just work every day, drawing, trying to make my four comic pages a week done, plus everything else. And I don't need to see other people. I don't need to like check in with anyone how the comic is doing. I'm in charge of everything and I'm responsible for everything. And that's how I, that's how I like it. I don't like working on a team and uh, like doing someone else's project. I like doing my own stories. And there's of course, you know, downsides to this kind of job. For me, like the being alone all day is like amazing. But for a lot of people, that's like a huge negative to being a comic artist or an artist in general. The loneliness is like gets to a lot of people and they like hate it so much that they get kind of depressed about it. Like the not having any social life, which I don't have. Like my extent of a social life is like occasionally talking to people on social media. And I like it. A lot of people don't like it. So do keep it in mind if you are looking into becoming a comic artist. Who works from home um, if you don't enjoy being alone for weeks and weeks and years and years on end you might want to look into getting like a shared studio space or just do it as a hobby <laughs> the dream job could turn into a nightmare job and then you're gonna hate doing art or comics after it <laughs> happens to some people and then they just like go into video games or something instead after they get burnt out um and another like downside is uh, you know what you get for being self-employed is that you don't have any income security like my income is purely based on like ad revenue reg when you add money from people reading the comic online and people buying the books and like other merchandise which means it's super like seasonal my income like people buy books and the ads pay well around christmas for a few months and then my income like falls off a cliff <laughs> And it's really bad for like the next half year at least. And then it starts picking up again. And that's like the same for most artists, I think. Unless you have a salary, like you work from work for someone. Um, and that can be really stressful because you never know how much you make. And you could theoretically make nothing. <clears throat> oh, goodness. 
need to cough. So yeah, you could like make nothing and still be working like 70 hours a week. It's all dependent on how much you're able to sell. And there's no minimum wage or like an employer giving you money, even if things are going badly. You are in charge of all of that and it's all up to you how well you're able to make money. And you have to be able to like always save when things are going well. Like, uh, I'm always happy when my Christmas monies are coming in, but I know I can't spend it. I have to save all of it for the next six months that are going to be like a fraction of what I make. And uh, yeah, like, even a couple of years ago, still, the money I would make in the springtime wouldn't even like cover my basic bills. It would be like, I would be like, hoping that it would be over a thousand bucks like please be over a thousand bucks this month and then i would look at the, what i would get and it would be like 700 bucks 600 bucks <laughs> and it would be like sweating bullets and hoping that next month it would be better and then it would take like uh, six months to start turning around so yeah that's how you have to be with money if you're doing you know, art or comics without being hired by someone. Always be careful with your money. So that's kind of what it's like being an artist other than just drawing all the time. All right, next question is, um, how do I decide my color palettes? That was asked a few times also. And, um, I have a few ways of deciding my color palettes. One is like the lucky way where I just get like an image in my head and I can just go from there. But usually I have to like look at the um, inspiration pictures. Like I will have an idea for what the subject matter and composition is, but I can't like think of a color palette that excites me at that moment. And then I will just go on like Instagram or Pinterest or some photo sites or, you know, there's a lot of like color inspiration websites that are just for that. And I will go through those for maybe 10 minutes. And once I see a few pictures that like I like in that moment, I will kind of combine a color palette from them. You know, not like mechanically picking out colors, but just in my mind trying to think uh, what would be a nice combination of those colors. And sometimes I also go like look at my drawings that I have been doing the last few months and see if there's like, often I get into like a mood where I draw for a while in the same colors a lot. And I will see if maybe it's time to pick something else. If I be doing a lot of, um, lot of like, blue, blue paintings and a lot of dark paintings in a long time, then I will try like okay, I will do something light and something that's like, uh, not blue. <laughs> maybe try some warmer colors instead. I will try to do something light and uh, maybe yellow or orange toned. That's how I kind of approach picking color palettes. Um then the next question, oh, a lot of questions were about how do I like paint digital, digitally in a way that it looks like uh, kind of like watercolors and uh, yeah that's all asked very often and um, um, really I just, I just paint the way I used to paint when I did a traditional painting. I used to paint with watercolors and acrylics a lot, like a few years back. And uh, I used to do it the exact same way digitally. Like I paint all of my colors on one layer. That helps a lot. And uh, as you can see now in the recording, all the colors are just the one layer and the only other layer is the line art or like the character Emil 
everything else is just one layer and I'm painting like I would with acrylics and um, I get the more like watercolor -y feel to it by having my brush on a very low opacity I just kind of layering from light to dark slowly building up like I used to do with watercolors and honestly I recommend for everyone who wants to get the more traditional style for their digital paintings is to practice a lot of traditional art you know while you're also doing digital art because the two ways of doing it will kind of influence each other and you will you know learn to do it that way I think it would be very difficult to learn doing traditional looking digital art without actually learning to do real traditional art and learning why it looks that way, like how you get to that point with the paints. And definitely just using one layer for the painting is uh, helps with that because that forces you to not take too many digital shortcuts, I think. And you're really painting the way you would in real life because you don't have layers in real life <laughs> but i do love the fact that i can keep the line art on a different layer that's like my biggest annoyance with doing traditional art like having a line art and then it gets like covered in paint after you work on it that's so annoying all right mm. oh yeah Someone asked if my art is digital or watercolor. Uh, all of my art from the last like five years or so is all digital. I haven't done traditional in so long. I do want to do it again soon. Hopefully. I have all of my materials still. I just never dig them out. <laughs> Alright, uh, next question is... Uh, this is an interesting question. How do you fundraise for creating your comics? Many artists use Kickstarter and Indiegogo for publishing, but I don't see many use it for covering living expenses and production costs while they are working on the comic. How do you do it? I made sure that I made enough profit from my Indiegogo campaigns for my comics that I would be able to live on it, on that money, until the next book was done and ready to go. Like, I do see, like, a lot of comic artists, they just sell their books way too cheap. Like, it's insane how little value many people put on their work. Like, they will have, like, no profit almost, or, like, one buck per book, which means if they sell 10, 10,000, a thousand books on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, all they make is a thousand bucks. And like, how long do you live on that? Like half a month? Yeah, I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't even really want to do physical books in the beginning at all, <laughs> because I knew it's so much work. And I was just happy doing my comics online. And when people started asking me to make books and do them through crowdfunding, I decided that if I'm going to do it, I want to make proper, proper money from it. And yeah, I price my books the way like high quality books would be priced in a proper bookstore. <clears throat> Like, I wasn't trying to compete with cheap books on Amazon or other artists who value their full-color graphic novels at, like, 15 bucks and free shipping, <laughs> which some people do, and you just don't make any money from it. Yeah, I, I took a good profit margin, and uh, by selling just a couple like less than a couple thousand books, like a thousand three hundred books, I think was what I sold through my first uh, Indiegogo. It was like a 600 page graphic novel. Like uh, that made me enough profit after paying for everything, 
printing, shipping, that was like half of the money went to shipping, um, taxes, Indiegogo's percentage, everything else like packaging materials. I still made enough profit that uh, I could live on that money for like one and a half years until the next book was done. And then that one made enough profit again just by selling about the same amount of books that I could live another one and a half year on it. And then at that point, like now, I'm where my comic just makes enough money from ads and regular book sales, like to the year that I'm able to like live on it. So I don't have to worry about it any anymore. But yeah, you just need to put enough value on your books <laughs> if you do them through crowdfunding to actually make a profit after it. Like my philosophy is that I would rather sell a thousand books with 10 bucks profit margin and make 10,000 than to sell 10,000 books with one dollar profit margin and also make 10,000 because in one of the scenarios I'm going to spend half a year sending out packages to people and in the other scenario I will be done in two weeks but make the same amount of money so <laughs> yeah definitely don't undervalue your work people all right next uh, next question um oh it's about my little 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 humming fluff creature <laughs> Um, it's, uh, is your griffon is a cat, but with what kind of bird? I thought it's a hummingbird because of your nickname, but not sure because of griffon's beak. Uh, that is correct. It was originally going to be a hummingbird and a cat, but uh, the hummingbird beak looked really stupid. <laughs> it was really difficult to draw any like facial expressions with the mouth, with the beak like that. So, and it kind of looked like a mosquito cat. <laughs> so I kept kind of like the hummingbird wings, like little pointed ones. But um, yeah, the beak is like a really short one so that I can draw a mouth for the griffin cat. <laughs> uh, next question is, did you go to art school? And if so, how was your experience? I went to graphic design school, which is technically an art school. Like the school it was part of is the Industrial Art School of Helsinki. It's something else nowadays. It's part of like Alta University and it's like the school of design and architecture, I think. But yeah, it was Taide Teollinen Korkeakoulu, aka Taik, aka Industrial Arts. But it wasn't like painting and uh, drawing, it was just graphic design, like learning to, you know, design magazine interiors, prepare print files, uh, book covers, uh, flyers, uh, logos, corporate, um, like uh, visual branding, stuff like that. I think we had like two or three drawing related classes of like 30 <laughs> in total. Um, but um, I had a good experience there, you know, anyway, even though it wasn't like uh, drawing related. I spent a lot of my time there working on my first comic and it's where I realized that I hated doing any sort of creative work for clients. And I really, really got motivated to work really hard on my comic pursuits. And I was, uh, like, the professors there were really supportive of that. Uh, they were, like, uh, yeah, supportive is the good word for it. They were really trying to get people to find their own niche. And it was, uh, like, very much uh, encouraged to for everyone to like, kind of become freelancers in whatever field they wanted to go into, be it illustration or 
logo design or typography or in my case uh, comic art so I was like allowed to draw my comics during <laughs> lectures and stuff but nobody said anything about it so it was a nice time and I did learn a lot of very useful stuff I'm I've been able to like do my print files for my own books without problem because of all of the information I learned there. Um, next next question is, do you organize your time to draw or do you draw when you feel like it? I definitely organize my time. The last time I was like drawing when I feel like it was, an, was, was when I was a teenager. And before I got serious about art. And um, as you would guess, I would be like, draw a few pictures and then it would be two months and I wouldn't produce anything because I was just like, oh, I'll draw when I'm inspired to draw. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work. I had to learn how to draw even when I'm not motivated and just learn to construct good drawings just from like basic ideas without being inspired by them and uh, nowadays obviously I have to get my comic pages done that I have set out to do so I have to draw even if I'm even if I'm crying and drawing <laughs> which uh, you know sometimes happens like everyone gets their sad times of the year or a couple of years and sometimes I just don't feel like you're drawing. I just want to move out into the woods and never draw again. And uh, sometimes it takes a few weeks, sometimes a few months, but I have to sit down every day and draw the next page. And then the bad feelings go away and I'm happy again. But yeah, you have to be very disciplined if you want to be self-employed as an artist. There's no boss there to force you to go to work and you can really kind of ruin your career by like taking hi hiatuses. Like uh, that's how a lot of comic artists, especially like web comic artists, kind of just fall off a good, uh, like a well-growing audience trajectory like they lose their inspiration and then they don't update for a half a year until they feel like it again and it's uh, it's just not good for business uh next question would you like to make a sticker set with trolls they are so cute and cool <laughs> i actually do want to make some it's on my list of stickers to make definitely <laughs> um Next question is, what is your favorite thing about creating comics? Mm, getting out the stories that I have in my mind and uh, seeing people enjoy them. That's why I love making them as webcomics because I get feedback in real time. Like after every page, I can see people enjoying them. That's what I really love, people enjoying the story. And of course, being able to work from home alone. <laughs> That's the other favorite part. Um, next question is, how long does it take to finish a page? 15 hours is a very good like average and what I try to always strive for. Some of them take a little bit longer, some of them take a little bit shorter and it averages out to about that much. And last question is uh, a question about like how I write the plot for my comic. And it's like, uh, I know that some parts of the plot may be changing as pages are being drawn because of new ideas. Uh, but I wonder if there were a big deviation from first ideas, like, oh shit, how could it happen right now? <laughs> or are you moving strictly along an already well thought outline? I try to write as good of a script beforehand as I can, because um, back in the day when I was like just starting out doing comics for fun, my biggest problem was that I wouldn't script out things properly and I would like 
write myself into a bag or realize that I had no idea where the plot was going. So that's something I have fixed now as I'm doing comics seriously. Like the comics I mean are like comics when I was a teenager, not the ones that you guys see online. <laughs> so yeah, I have a, a pretty well-written script in that I always know where we are going and I haven't deviated from the main plot a lot. The only things that really changed it that sometimes I realized that I need to like add a scene or some scene is just not really needed so I remove it or change it or make it really short or move it somewhere else and uh, you know little things like that I change but like the main plot I yeah I haven't really gotten into a situation where I'm like oh no I need to revamp the whole thing <laughs> no little changes here and there um especially like further into the story I might realize that like oh four chapters from now I wasn't thinking like properly about this and this and I think it's gonna be good if I like add this one thing and uh, now I'm going to like foreshadow it like in the next few pages and then I like make a note for myself that I need to remember to actually execute on the foreshadowing. <laughs> Little changes like that but uh, not uh, not too many drastic changes thankfully. Haven't been needed yet but you you never know. I'm not you know a perfect writer and uh, changes could happen but not too many. Um, I think that was all of the questions I saw, uh, at least so far. You know, obviously there's more questions that people ask a lot during the streams and stuff. And um, yeah, I'm sure I will be doing more like Q&A videos in the future also. But uh, for now, this is it. Thank you all for watching. And um, I hope you enjoyed the drawing. And you can, of course, find me on my Instagram and uh, the comic on my website. I should be linking all of those in the description. And um, the chapter break is ending now on Thursday. So, yay, the comic will be back after two weeks of break. And um, I will see you all then. And the next video will probably be up in like the next week or two. Don't know what I will be doing for the next one. But uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.